Lord, we thank you for the life of Ella Chase Brown. I thank you, Father, that all the years that I knew her, always a faithful servant unto you, always a blessing unto your body. She went forth singing and taking the group many, many, many places. Lord God, I thank you, God, for, for Brittany and for Cody, for husband Ted and, and our special friend Bertie. Lord, that today that you're helping them. I'm having a hard time with it. I know they are. Lord God, but you know best, and she's with you this morning. We just thank you for Ella's life. We thank you, Lord God, a life that's been well spent blessing many, many people. And I give you honor, praise, and glory for her in Jesus' name. Some of y'all are familiar with, uh, I can think of the name of it. They call it the church on, uh, on the island. Rusty, you know? Oh, and I know his name. It's a big church. Nancy, Nancy Harmon used Anyway, Ella was worship leader there for many years, but I met her up in Kunek back when I first came there in 1980. She was, uh, Bobby Milam come to me and said, Pastor, we uh, have already booked this group before you took the church over, and so would you honor that booking? I said, of course. And uh, I had just gotten off the field, so I knew a lot of people, a lot of churches, and uh, I just fell in love with Ella. At that time it was her and Bertie, and uh, 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 two guys, I know their name, it just slipped me right now, a piano player and a, and a bass player. But anyway, they were such godly kids. They uh, seemed like kids at the time. It ended up, she's just four years younger than me. But anyway, uh, they were always so dedicated to God. She wouldn't let them do anything. They, they had their discipline. She was very disciplinary in her own life uh, with uh, her health and exercise and all that stuff. And and uh, every day before they did anything, they had their devotions and studied together. They're just precious people. And uh, then she went on and married. Uh, we used to joke. Bertie said, you know, if, uh, we could get Ella to marry uh, Alan Funt. Y'all remember Alan Funt, Andy Cameron? She said, then we'd have Ella Funt. <laughs> but she ended up marrying, becoming Ella Brunt, B-R-U-N-T. But anyway, we're going to miss her so much. She's been very precious to me. And uh, there'll be service on Friday for her. But thank you. Are kids going out or you feel like it? Okay, yeah. I didn't know if you'd go out or not. Children, your pastor's here. She's going back. Maybe they see what I'm feeling about. So welcome George home this morning. I miss him so much, but I know he's uh, uh, enjoying Colorado. I told him I was a little bit envious of him. I love it out there. And especially there where he's at, that's his heart. Uh, it's a beautiful place right outside of Denver. Then uh, right next to Boulder. Sort of, sort of. Anyway, real nice area. And uh, so glad you're home, buddy. And I, I felt like this morning when I was getting ready, I feel like George will be there today. And he is. So we're so glad you're here. Uh, we went up on Wednesday. Uh, Brother McCorkle got married. I don't know how many of y'all know that. Uh, he married Carol Robertson. Of course, Carol and Jim were our dear friends here. They still are. But anyway, uh, they felt like that they should be together. And uh, that dude, he, he's a comedian. He, he was a comedian all through the service. I didn't realize he was such a comedian. But anyway, it was a beautiful service. And I love both of them so much. Appreciate it. And Shirley went with me to help us get them married off. But anyway, this morning I have a, a New Year's word, and uh, I know it's maybe not for anybody but me and Lily. Look, it's Lily's favorite word, and uh, I like it too. We'll talk about hope this morning. As we begin a new year, we've talked to some of my friends, or I think you know, uh, or somebody up there. I mean, like, anyway, there's it's to, it's come to the place that we have a lot more people that are over there than are over here that we know. And uh, you say well, that's strange. Well, if you've been around as long as some of us have, and and and, and your full life has been with people, uh, you'd understand that. But and you probably do already. I mean, also. But, uh, there's a lot of folks that have gone on. But while we're still here, we have hope. 
The world is in chaos. And, and I've been thinking about it. I don't listen to much news anymore. It's just disgusting when I listen to it. And so it's best not to listen because there's very little good news. Man, I love it when once in a while somebody comes across with a good report, something good that's happened. And you don't hear much of that. They don't want to talk about that. But uh, there are some good things happening. And uh, God is still in control this morning. And that word that came forth today, I, I want to show you something. You saw it. You sat here and experienced it. But sweet little Wyatt Judy. Probably never even heard her squeak hardly. Came forth with that force in tongues. It was very forceful. But you notice what it was. It was to bring down walls. And you see, that's how the Holy Ghost works. He works the, the, uh, in that way. That, that's why it was so forceful. Because it was to do something, accomplish something that, that needed a lot of force. And then David got up and sang, Be still and know I'm God. God is there. Regardless if it's in a time when it's a forceful, powerful thing going on, or if it's something soft and something something very uh, just still, being still. Uh, I know there's times that I need to be still, and, uh, and I don't a lot of times, but uh, I'm working on that. I don't believe necessarily in making New, Year, New Year's resolutions, but I have made some uh, commitments in my own mind and, and heart, and I'm going to stick with them. Uh, one thing, I, I've got to do something with this weight. I'll give it to anybody that wants it. But I've got to do something about that. But there's some other things, too, that the Lord's been telling me about. But I'm just so thankful for you in this house that God has blessed us with the most wonderful people. Uh, I just said that I've been in this over 50 years, so I've met a whole lot of people, No, still know a lot of people. Um, when I go up to Kunek, there's still several there that I pastored back in 1980. And uh, that's a long time ago. Yes. A <laughs> long time ago. That's older than you are, ain't it? About one year. One year. <laughs> so that's how far back that group goes. And there were several there that, that were in the church when I was there. But, uh, you know, you build relationships over the years. And there's something, that just like the word you got, Kathy. You know, relationships we build is something that cannot be taken away from us. It can't be taken away. The, the faith that you express in your life, in your walk with God, nobody can take that away from you. People could help increase it by speaking the word of God to you, but nobody's going to take it away. And as I brought this lesson together, I got all excited about it because my hope is in Him today. Amen. My hope is in God. Right. For 2023, I uh, there are some things that I'd like to see. God protects this house, church. I'm going to tell you right now. Last Sunday, you know it was chilly in here. Uh, Shannon went out and hit a breaker, but that wasn't the whole problem. He went back later, and it had burned. The copper had burned up in there. God spared us from losing our church. Second time that's happened. Second time. In this building alone. On the back building years ago, way before when WT was here, if you'll remember years ago, we almost lost the same kind of thing. And God has protected. Uh, thank you, Shannon, Tyler. They came up here yesterday. Got all that fixed. It's all working again now. Well, except the one of this whole thing is going on. My son-in-law, Paul, uh, we had some frozen uh, pipes and he fixed that. So we're all back on, on track again. But uh, thank you fellows for doing all that. And uh, uh, God, I appreciate it so much. But I'm just thankful that God spared our house. Amen. It's here. Thanks to God. And uh, thanks to Shannon now for fixing it. But let's go into Job. I, I had one other one I wanted to read to you over in uh, uh, Ruth about Naomi and Ruth, but I, I decided not to on it. But I'll just tell you quickly. Uh, if you'll remember when uh, Naomi, uh, has her, uh, now I just got off. 
Anyway, she took the two daughter-in-laws with her. Both the sons had died. Took the sons-in-law with her. I mean, the daughters-in-law with her. And the one didn't want to go, but Ruth said, I'm sticking with you. Where thou goest, I will go. And so, but during that little episode, when they were going through all that, something was spoken about hope at that time. And Naomi just asked them, and that's why I didn't really go into it, but I'm going to just say a little bit about it. She said, it, what if it's the hope that what if I could get me a man and get another little boy? But y'all would be will old when they got old enough for you to marry them. I just put it in Oki's Oki language. That's what she's saying to them. But she said, there is a hope. That is a hope that that could happen. So I didn't go into that. Now you see why. But I did go over into Job. And we're going to start in Job chapter 4. Job was a man that lost everything he had. Everything. But he decided he would not, would not turn on his God. He would remain faithful to his God. And as I studied, I read a lot of stuff that I didn't put in the lesson today. But, you know, he, he, he was a little bit of a whiner too. Job was sad. <laughs> he was kind of a whiner. He whined a lot. And uh, uh, pity parties and stuff like that. And I, didn't, I didn't include any of them in this lesson today. But Job found himself in a place that he never thought he would find himself. But God brought him through. Over in uh, the fourth chapter of Job, beginning in verse number three, it says this, Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak knees. This is what they were trying to encourage him. Tell him, you've helped some folks, dude. You've helped some folks. And uh, you've strengthened their knees and, uh, and uh, uh, strengthened their weak hand. The words have upholded him that was falling. In other words, you lifted them up. And thou hast strengthened the feeble knees, the bending knees. Verse 5 but now it has come upon you. The very things that you was helping other people with are here at your door now. You're going through it now. Anybody ever done any of that? <laughs> Been there for folks. Been there and helped them through many, many things. And then a similar thing would come to your house. A similar thing would come to your life. That is no time to back down. That's the time to get stronger. I'm going to tell you about me. I've had a lot of of uh, challenges in the ministry ever any preacher is worth a salt has. But uh, uh, I've had a lot of them. And I found the times that I was the strongest was when the challenge was the hardest. Every time, Judy's been, she's with us through one of them. Nancy, through some of them. And those times, to me, when that would happen, instead of succumbing to it, and falling down, that's when old fat boy jumped up and said, I'm going to win this thing. I'm going to win this battle because I know God's on my side. God is on your side today. And they were reminding Job here. He said, look, you've helped a lot of people in these same areas. But now then, it's your turn. But now it's come on you. And you fainted. It touched thee and your trouble." In other words, they're telling you, you're not handling this very good. We want to get your attention. Today, I want you to know there's hope in God. It does not matter what has come to your life up to this point in time. How many ever past years there may have been challenges. We are entering into a new time right now. And as we enter into 2023, I said, God, I, I, I've always tried to do a New Year's uh, message, but I said, God, I want it to be something that's really going to help some folks today. That's really going to get some purpose in our life once again. Some the areas where we've kind of failed. I'll be honest. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I've been a whole lot stronger in the past than I have been recent. But I'm going to get back to where I know I need to be. All right. I know. I know what it takes to get there. And I know what it takes to maintain. It takes something to maintain. That's what old Job, he would just, well, I mean... I'm not being too rough on him. He had good reason. He lost everything. A very wealthy man. 
Lost all of his wealth, all of his cattle, all of his kids. Well, that part, you know, sometimes we wish. But anyway, <clears throat> he lost everything. And yet, he said, God is faithful. At verse 6, it said, Is not this thy fear? We're going to break those all down, so just give me a minute. Is this not thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope, and the uprightness of thy ways? Job, wake up, dude. You've helped people through all of these things. And now it's on you. And now then, it's time that you utilize the, the, the same thing that you used to help others through it, to bring yourself through it right now. Are y'all getting anything out of this yet? You will a little bit of hope. Because these are some good things here. Every one of these words, fear, of course immediately we think fear is, uh, is you know, I'm scared to death. No, it doesn't mean that. It's number 3374. And it's Yira. Y I R A H. And it simply means reverence. Is not this thy reverence? Job, instead of whining, honor God right now. Revere God right now. Instead of letting this thing overcome you, you are the overcomer. And that's who we are today. Church, there's hope in Him today. That as we reverence God, we're going to see some things. The next one. Is thy confidence. This one is number 3690. In the strong. And it's. Uh, K-A-C-L-A-H. And it's, it's pronounced Kisla. And it means. In a good sense. Trust. We don't want the bad sense. In a good sense it means. Trust. Confidence in God. Church, you're looking at someone this morning that my full trust is in Him. I don't know if any of you have ever come up against someone, or not against, but in contact with someone that you just flat couldn't trust them. You ever know anybody like that? I hear some, I hear some rocks chatting back there. We have confidence this morning. They're reminded Him, said, uh, it's not this your, your reverence, your confidence, your trust. Then we're going to move on to hope. Number 8615. And it's pronounced Tikva. It's spelled T-I-Q-V-A-H, but it's pronounced Tikva. Literally, it means a cord. We all know about the three stranded cord, how strong it is and all. And, we, and uh, wouldn't that David talk about that this morning? About with the body of Christ, who we are. It's a cord. As an attachment. Something that hope is part of you. It's a cord. It is attached to you. It's something that you're going to know that any time that some kind of issue comes or challenge comes, you have the hope, that attachment that's going to bring you through. That is faith in God. That is the Word of God. That's the thing he's talking about here. But it figuratively, it means expectancy or expectation. The thing that I long for. What is your hope today? I have hope. In some situations. You'd already mentioned your family. How blessed you are in 37 years. I remember that night. They got married in the middle of the night at a was that you? Yeah. Watch at a watch night service. We stayed there that night about four in the morning, if I remember right. Yeah. That was your bad. And uh Kathy at the time didn't have all them young uh young and and, uh, well, great grandkids and great grandkids. But uh, it, it come out that she only had one son. But all his offspring, and their offspring, 
thought God had spoken directly to them to replenish the earth. Yeah, that's true. There's a bunch of them. Bunch of them. But God has blessed this union. He's blessed this union. And uh, just like my former wife, people sometimes talk about our age difference. The work is in that also. David married an older woman. Or she married a younger man. Because she found in the word of God, when she's old, he won't depart from her. <laughs> That's scripture. But look what God has done. But there's been a hope. And in some of your lives, I, I talk to some of you once in a while. And there's an expectancy. Right now, in 2023, there is an expectancy that we're going to see this house full like it used to be. Amen. I believe it. I believe that God has people that belong here that just don't know it yet. But even if, it, even if that's not just the case, my hope and my expectancy is the same God that has been faithful Throughout all of our lives and through many things. I could go through this room right now and I could, could uh, interview some folks. Talk about some things they've gone through. But God has brought them through every one of them. And He's going to bring us through the rest. Because that is our hope. That is my expectancy this morning. Amen. That's attached to me. That's just part of me. It's that cord that is on me. Isn't it the thing that I long for? The next one is uprightness of thy ways. Number 8537. And this is spelled Tom, T-O-M, but it's pronounced Tom, T-O-M-E. I like this one. This one, that uprightness, means completeness. My dear friend that just passed Wednesday, I, it, I, it, I'm not going to deny it. It shook me up. Very fond of Ella and, and Ted. They're, I just had dinner with them not long ago in Galveston. Just very good people. They're, they're some of the best people I've ever known in my life. Very godly, godly people. And I've watched uh, their lives develop. See, God bless them. They married at an older age, so their kids uh, were born in their older ages. So, uh, he, she was an educator, teacher, and uh, coach, and different stuff. And then Ted was uh, worked at the plant. But they said that they couldn't. Bertie, our little friend that uh, is comes here when they're here, Bertie Jones, she's a doctor out of San Antonio. And uh, Bertie told me she said, "Well, all they can figure said never. She never smoked a cigarette in her life. Never took a drink of alcohol in her life. Ever." Any kind of drugs and stuff. She's a very healthy person. And they said all they could figure. Uh, who said something about hereditary this morning? That was you. They, they're saying this was a hereditary thing. Her brother died the same thing. And they said they believed it's because they were raised up there in Baytown. Around all the chemicals. And they, you know, some people's body just can't adjust to it. I remember when we first moved down here. We lived out by Phillips. Right down the road. And every time I'd go up there to get the mail in Old Ocean, there was times that I, I, I felt all right, but all of a sudden my sinus just, I mean like hot water. Not just a little drip out of it. I mean it just like a damn burst. And hot water come out of my head. And I was acclimating to this this area down here. I wasn't used to, I was used to wide open hills, prairies in Oklahoma. I wasn't used to this all this stuff. So, uh, there could be something to that. But at any rate, uh, she's gone on to be with the Lord. But as I thought about this, the uprightness, the completeness, God is doing a work. But figuratively, this word means prosperity. Morally, innocence. Full, integrity, Perfect and simplicity is what this uprightness means. We have the hope today that God is going to be with us this year like never before. Amen. 
We have ministries in this house that I believe God is just going to bless. Got two superstars here, singers, that are coming out to do albums just any time now to bless many people. We have authors in this house. We've really got some smart folks here. <clears throat> that don't have to be the one behind the pulpit. We, there are some in that. Uh, I'm street smart. These guys are all, all, all good. But a lot of talent in this house. And there are the thing that I want to talk about is the definite call on lives in this house. Because God has placed you where you are. And I feel like in this house, many of us realize what our position is. When we try to bury and go over into a different area from where God is, is taking us, that's when we get in trouble. But if you stay lined up with what God is calling you to do, and you go for that, your hope is going to be full. All those things I just mentioned, all of them, the, the, the confidence, the fear, the hope, and the uprightness, that's all going to be functioning in us all the time. Because God is bringing us to a new place in 2023. In Job 11, verse number 1 and 2, it says this, Then answered so far, I love these names, the... Namathite, and said, Should not the multitude of words be answered? And should a man full of talk be justified? Wait a minute, I'm read the wrong verse. I read it wrong. Job 11, I knew that wasn't right. Number 18 instead of 1. <laughs> verse 18. Thou shalt be secure because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Yes. Hallelujah. There is hope. This is that same word, number 8615. Dig thou. This same hope, that, 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 that attachment, that's a part of you. That expectation. That expectation that thing that you long for. And thou shalt be secure because there is hope. And now verse 19, when you just read part of it, it says, Also, thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Now this is fear is talking about real this doubt now fear. Why? Why will nobody make you afraid? Because your hope is in God. Yeah. Now I know we're faith people. I understand that. But hope. Is very a, a very a part of us also. We need to understand today that that hope is in Him, and as we listen to Him and do our best to obey what He's telling us to do, I believe we're going to see some changes this year. Job 14 says this, uh, 14 verse 7: For there is hope of a tree. I like this one. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth. It's real old in the earth. And the stock thereof died in the ground. Yet through the, I love this part. Through the very scent. Very smell of water. The very smell of water. It will bud and bring forth boughs or boughs like a plant. He said just a hint or scent, just a smell of water is going to bring life. But I like the part about the old, old wax old in the earth. There's some of us sitting around here this morning kind of waxing old in the earth. <laughs> but there's still potential for life. Many of you can ensure that every week, Pat, every week, they said teach the word of God. You are Bringing life to people. In this year, I want to see us just expand in every area of our lives. 
I want to see the blessing of God on you like never before. I, I started calling you up this morning. I kind of motioned to Dorothy, but you didn't see me. When she does the sign, there's just certain songs that I'd, I'd like to bring one of them today. I want you, but you didn't see me trying to get you to come up here. But she sign, does sign language. Shirley does sign language. But I think it's so beautiful. One time, uh, I don't remember where it was or what was going on, but and we were in a real uh, strong worship service somewhere. It's been a long time ago, so I remember the situation. I don't remember where it was. But this person had never done sign language in their life. And when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they was laying on their back in the floor doing sign language. Had never done it before. I've heard of people that speak in tongues that have been in hospital rooms and, and uh, they'll speak out and someone in another area, maybe in the same room or another room, will hear them and it'll be their dialect that they're speaking in. And that person has touched some of you. have heard those kind of things happen. All these kind of testimonies. Things that happen in the spirit realm that only God can do. And we need to know that our hope is in Him today. Amen. He said this, even this the very, I like that one, the scent of water will cause that, that sprout to come forth and bud. Praise God. And that also is number, that word hope in that one opening is also 8615. Okay, now I'm going to go over to Psalms 16, verse 8 through 11. We're going to find hope over here also. Now we have another guy, David. I don't know why I chose to teach this morning or preach about two whiners. But both Job and David at times was a whiner. I mean, he's a great man of God. Great, great man of God. He had a lot of woe as me in his life also. But here, in the 16th chapter of Psalms, down in verse number 8, I'll get it right this time. He said, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Right now, it's time for us to just settle in with God. Amen. I didn't say, I didn't say pull back. I said settle in. Understanding that what he has planned for you and me is going to be accomplished as we are obedient unto him. Amen. And as we go forth in this day, uh, Christine put something on the uh, preaching on the, on the prayer chain yesterday. And I said, Amen. Because I know you live it. What she was saying, she lives it day in and day out. When you do that, you're going to find God on a lot of areas uh, and moving in some areas where in the past maybe you haven't seen too much movement. Oh, David said, I set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my, joy, my glory rejoiceth. My, my flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou will not leave my soul in hell Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are bread and pleasures forevermore. When we get a hold of this, this hope, this attachment, this cord, amen. amen. All those that I read here, that same old, that same uh, 8615 definition. All of this as we understand, hey, this is a part of me. That's what David was saying. This is just a part of me. I don't know how to act any different. I don't know how to do things any different. I've always trusted in God, and I'm not going to stop now. Church, I'm going to tell you, I've always trusted in God, and I'm not going to stop now. Yeah, amen. amen. Yes. We have too much before us. Right. Amen to slow down now. Romans 4, 16. I'm almost finished. <laughs> Romans 4 verse 16 I'll read quick therefore it is a faith that 
it might be by grace, to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. And I just had to read that one to bring us up to this next point. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, speaking of Abraham. <clears throat> Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, becoming a father at a hundred years old. That's pretty, that's, only God can pull that off. Only God, he had to have Abraham's uh, assistance, but God did the work. Verse 18, Who's, who against hope believed in hope. This is a different word. This is number 983, and it's betach, the E-T-A-C-H. And this word hope is a place of refuge It's also safety. It's trust, assurance, confidence, hope, and security. This word, be taught, means all of those. But now this hope is kind of a different one than the, than the other. Of course, the definition. Where did I stop? Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. I mean, when God said it, he told Sarah, get ready. Start getting some booties, honey. We're going to have a baby. And I'm sure she'd be just like wives today would be, you silly old fool. That might have crossed her mind. But not Abraham. He said, God said it. God said it. He believed that he may, and not being weak in faith, verse 19, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not, thank you, Lord, wavered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Everybody say strong in faith. Strong in faith. Giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what God promised, God was able to perform. Therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Aren't you glad for hope today? Yes. Hoping against hope. When it looks like it's impossible in 2023, I want to encourage you to persevere. Yes. I want you to keep that cord, that attachment, close at hand. Well, you're not going to be able to separate. It's going to be a part, it's a part of you. Keep that hope right always at hand. Romans uh, 5 and 5 says, And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, yes. which is given unto us. I love hope today. I have hope. Lily made me a keychain for uh, Christmas. I don't know how in the world she did it. But it's got my, 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 my baby Hummer, my Jeep picture on it. And uh, it's the cutest thing. But she on the other side says hope. Y'all know she brought me when I was thinking I was dying in the hospital and others thought I was dying the epidemic situation. She brought me a big old balloon and that that... I brought it here the plaque about hope. My hope is in Him today, church. Amen. As we move into 2023, if discouragement comes to try to come against you, break that wall down. Yes. Get bold like Judy did this morning. Yes. Man, I had to look to see who that was. Now, well, I won't go there, but I, I've never heard her even ever. She's always so quiet, shy, but not shy. In closing, 
Romans 12 verse 9 says this. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business. Be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Whoa, we don't like that one. Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. I started to ask you to call Nick. See, I, I believe God heard us when we prayed for others. I want you to check on it. I just believe that little lady is so full of faith. And I believe in the name of Jesus, she's healed today. Others have called in for prayer. This girl in Oklahoma, uh, the leeches, you all never met Pam. How old do you think she is, Kim? She's older than you are. Younger than Kim. They grew up together, all of them. And Frida and Olin has been here before. And Mike. But anyway, uh, Pam is not that old, but she went and had her eyes fixed and, and they messed them up some of them. Well, God's able to correct that. Yeah, yeah. He's able to correct that. And so when we pray, we believe that we receive. It said rejoice in hope, patient tribulation, continuing incident in prayer. Verse 13, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. I'm giving us some things to start off in 2023. Or maintain. Keep doing it. We are good doing it. Keep doing it. Bless them that persecute you and bless and curse not. And rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one of another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no men evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, I'm sure glad they put that part in. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. I want us to go into this new year with hope, with that cord attached to us. Walking in the things that God has planned for you. I don't feel like uh, maybe coming with a prophetic utterance right now. We've already had one from our prophet this morning about bringing down those walls. But uh, I just do want to encourage you prophetically that if there's areas where you've been longing to press on into some things in God, whatever it might be, I could, you know, different people, different things. I want you to be encouraged to do that. I want you to know that that hope that lies within you is going to sustain and carry you. Father, I just thank you this morning for this beautiful group of people. Lord, I know I was speaking to the church today. You were speaking to the church today. For we have our hope lies in you. Lord, you are that security. You are that poor. And I thank you as we leave today that we're, we're inspired by your word. We're inspired by your spirit to go out and win souls. Go out and heal the sick. Give to those that need something in their life, physical things. Areas, Lord God, where you deal on with us, we're going to be obedient in Jesus' name. Yes. I speak blessing on every household represented in this room right now. And I say hope will rise even in a greater measure. Yes, God. It will rise in a greater measure, Lord, in this house. That cord, that attachment, Lord God, that's just part of us. And you're the one that's placed it there. I give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name. I hope you received something this morning. Hope you feel a little encouraged in your walk with God. And, and I definitely want you to be encouraged with your calling. Yes. What you're called to do. Be encouraged with that. God bless you as you go.